Welcome to Pat's Cast. I'm Brad Whitaker. The future of the quarterback position for the New England Patriots is one of those questions that's been raised along with who's going to be the head coach, who's going to be the GM, and a lot depends on where the Patriots land in the 2024 NFL Draft. Right now they have the fourth overall pick, which could get better or worse depending on how the Patriots finish the season with their upcoming games against the Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets, and on how well Bailey Zappi actually performs in those games. You want to hear me break down Zappi and why him being a potential starter is a possibility. Check out my podcast from a couple of days ago. But right now I'm going to talk about Russell Wilson. And is there a potential future there in New England for Russ? And as, as we learned yesterday, Wilson was benched by head coach Sean Payton in Denver in favor of another former Patriots quarterback Jarrett Stidham who will be finishing the remainder of the season now that isn't to say Stidham is a better quarterback than Wilson it's just it is time for that organization according to Sean Payton to move on from Russ who is expected to be cut at the end of the year or traded uh, to become a free agent in all likelihood he'll be cut because he is due a lot of money the rest of the way which presents an interesting opportunity if the Patriots feel that Russell Wilson still has a future as a solid starting NFL quarterback. It depends really on who you ask. A lot of people think Russ is washed. He's a shell of his former self. A lot of people say, hey, he's still a really solid starter in this league. And the numbers actually tell an interesting story. Wilson actually has the fourth highest career passer rating in NFL history at exactly 100, he's just behind Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, and Deshaun Watson. Interestingly enough, Tom Brady has only averaged a 97.2 passer rating throughout his 20-plus year career. So take that stat with a grain of salt. But if we're talking passer rating, Russ is still up there as one of the cream of the crop quarterbacks in NFL history. Um, So the question you may be asking is just how much has that passer rating dropped since he went from Seattle to Denver a couple of seasons ago? Well, last year he put up just an 84.4 rating, which is not very good uh, for a a high-paid starting NFL quarterback. However, this season he's actually reverted almost back to the mean at about 98. So Wilson's actually having a pretty solid year if you look at the numbers. And it goes beyond that. Wilson's thrown for 26 touchdowns uh, with just eight interceptions through 15 games with a little over 3,000 yards and a completion percentage of 66.4%, which is pretty solid. So if you look at the numbers, you say, hey, Wilson, you slide him in there, he's going to contribute right away and do a pretty good job. In fact, he's thrown the same number of touchdowns this season as Patrick Mahomes has with six less interceptions Uh, and a seven-point advantage in passer rating compared to Patrick Mahomes. Now, this is the worst season of Mahomes' career, so not saying a lot, but Russell Wilson, particularly the Wilson we saw in the fourth quarter against the New England Patriots the other day, still a pretty decent quarterback if you're looking at the numbers. But what are the criticisms of him? That's, That's the real question because a lot of people think he's washed, he's done for, and Greg Bedard, Patriots reporter, Um, is certainly in that camp. He said on X earlier today, he has never been good about throwing in the rhythm of a passing offense, but he got away with it in Seattle because of his legs, which is fine because there's no rhythm at all to the Patriots offense. He can slide him right in there and and really nothing's going to change, right? Well, yeah, I, I, I guess. Maybe Russ has did well in Seattle because of his legs and because he was with a really good offense that could build off of that with Pete Carroll, and it just hasn't been the same in Denver. We obviously know Russell Wilson is undersized for a quarterback. I think the biggest issue with him is he's kind of a weird guy, right? He's a bit aloof, doesn't have a lot of friends in the, the, the locker room. He's not meeting with his receivers, with his offensive linemen in the offseason doing workouts with them but anyone that's played with Russell Wilson will also tell you he's the kind of guy who shows up super early in the morning works very hard highly disciplined um, really a a professional quarterback he's just not 
the kind of personality that really engages an NFL locker room, fires people up. You see him running out of the tunnel, giving hate, fake high fives, doing all that stuff. Um, he's, he's a bit of a weird guy, right? But really, it just depends on uh, who, who you ask. I, I think he's probably a better option than Bailey Zappi at this point. Now, we don't know if Zappi has a much higher ceiling. He still keeps getting better. So maybe that question will be answered in the next couple of weeks. But I doubt it. So if you're not going to draft Drake May, Caleb Williams, or Jaden Daniels, or even have a chance to draft those guys, then you're looking at a quarterback in the second or third round, or you have to trade back into the late, later portions of the first round to get one of those second-tier quarterbacks. And like I said, there's a lot of questions about Bailey Zappi. So maybe Russell Wilson is an option. I'm certainly not ready to hand Zappi the starting job just yet. And if they keep winning, they're not going to get Drake May, Caleb Williams, or even Jaden Daniels. So look, I, I think a lot of this depends on if Bill Belichick is still the coach, which I, I don't think he's going to be the GM or he's going to delegate some more of those responsibilities if he comes back. But I think it's a flip of the coin at this point, especially if the Patriots play well against Buffalo and beat New York at the end of the season. It's going to be hard for Robert Kraft, a loyal guy, to say, Bill, you're out of here, even if six, eight weeks ago he thought he was gone. But let's say Bill is back. Belichick really speaks highly of Russell Wilson. Just as he spoke very highly of Cam Newton, a guy who he signed uh, the year after Tom Brady left. And I think Russell Wilson, you know, depending on how much you think he's regressed, it's safe to say he's a better option now than Cam Newton was in 2020. Not to mention, you still won seven games with Cam Newton and, uh, with a team that was in salary cap jail. You bring in a guy like Russell Wilson, and then you build around him with the pieces with that defense. Maybe you have something there. And then you use that first round pick, whether you're drafting 4th, 5th, 6th, or 7th, on a high-end tackle. There's a couple of guys who are really good, Joe Alt being at the top of that list. Or maybe you have a shot at a high-end receiver like Marvin Harrison Jr. You can't really miss selecting him. Uh, or you might have a guy like Malik Neighbors. He seems to be uh, the second best receiver in this draft. Kind of a Stefan Diggs comparison. He would be a really great selection to pair with Demario Douglas. And then maybe you bring back Hendrick Bourne and Hunter Henry. And then you got, you got some weapons on offense that you didn't have uh, this past season. So much of this is going to depend on if the price is right. Russell Wilson is still on the hook in Denver. For about $85 million. That was one of the most expensive contracts we've ever seen for an NFL quarterback. And he's owed a lot of money the rest of the way. Nobody's going to want to trade for that, in my opinion. They're not going to want to pay that. So the Denver Broncos are looking at cutting Russell Wilson and having to pay him a lot of that money over the next two years. Which means he's going to be a free agent. And he, he can select wherever he wants to go. Now... If that's the case, Russ isn't going to need a lot of money if he's still making $85 million over the next two years. If he sees a starting role where he thinks he can contribute and bounce back right away, why not sign a one-year deal for, you know, it could be the veteran's minimum, which is just $1.2 million, and see what you can do there. And New England might be one of those options. Yes, right now they don't have a lot of off options on, on offense, but they have about $100 million in cap space. They're going to have to bring back some defensive pieces to keep that defense at the level they're at now, but they have a lot of cash to spend on potentially beefing up that offensive line, which has looked a lot better the last few weeks, despite being banged up, despite losing Cole Strange. I think Cole Strange is pretty good. Um, I, I don't think he was a first-round pick, but he's looking to be a good left guard, a good piece going forward. You're still going to have David Andrews. Michael Owinu says he wants to come back. Uh, he, he, he may demand 15 to $18 million. That's, that's, not a, that's not cheap, but for a guy like that who, who could be a solid right guard or a solid right tackle, you, you, you pay that money. And then you draft a Joe Alt or bring back Trent Brown or, or all of the above. And now you have some depth there on that O-line, and you can really add some weapons at the receiver position. There's a lot you could do there that would attract a guy like Russell Wilson to want to come there and see if he can, he can have a comeback year, even though his numbers really aren't that bad if you're looking at what's going on there. But obviously it is not working out with him and Sean Payton in Denver. 
why not at least consider this, right? Spend that first round pick if you're not going to get one of those top two or three quarterbacks that everybody wants. Spend spend it on a tackle or on a receiver. And then in the second or third round, you draft a Michael Penix or you draft a Bo Nix. And you give him a year with Russell Wilson. And maybe you still have Bailey Zappi there. Maybe you still have Mac Jones. They're both cheap, right? Bailey Zappi plays well. You have a trade chip or, or uh, you can get maybe a third or fourth rounder for him. There's, there's some depth you can build there. Or you can have a really good quarterback room of a Bailey Zappi or Mac Jones a Michael Penix or Bo Nix with Russell Wilson. And then you just see where the chips fall, right? Um, is Russell Wilson going to dominate in training camp? Are we going to see something where a Michael Penix can develop and take over midway through the season or in his second year um, when Russ is just a short-term bridge guy? There's a lot of options here, and I know a lot of people are writing off Russell Wilson, but the numbers don't lie. I know he he doesn't have the legs that he used to, but he was never Lamar Jackson, right? Like this guy was never never had sprinter speed. He was just mobile, could make the right throws. The question is, if you, if you put him with a guy like Bill O'Brien, who's worked well with Deshaun Watson, is he going to to step right into that offense, go through the progression, do the right things, and become a, a leader on that uh, in that locker room? That's a big question. But again, if you're not getting one of those top quarterbacks. It is certainly worth considering. This is definitely a space to watch. Let me know if, you, if you're watching on YouTube in the comments below. Do you think Russell Wilson would be a viable option if you cannot get Drake May, Caleb Williams, or Jaden Daniels? Would you like to see Russell Wilson behind center? And if so, do you see him as a bridge guy? Do you see him as a guy that's going to be there for two, three, or four years? Um, or do you just say, stay the hell away, I'm happy with Bailey's happy and drafting another guy or... I want to go after a Kirk Cousins, someone who, who is a little bit more competent and can, can step into a pocket passing role right away instead of Russell Wilson, who, who may not go through the progression or do all the things that you want to do, but ha- brings a new element that we haven't really seen in New England, and, and I'm not really counting Cam Newton. Again, they won seven games with Cam Newton. With this defense, beefing up the O-line, adding some weapons on offense, you add Russell Wilson, Maybe this is a much better team heading into 2024. Let me know what you think.